My name is Ron Duncan. Uh, I am uh, currently a senior lecturer for La La Marymount University. I also am a lecturer at the University of Illinois. Uh, at LMU, I'm involved in the Business for Good, BCOR 1910 program. At the University of Illinois, I also teach sustainable business design and sustainable organization design uh, at the graduate and undergraduate level. And to be honest with you, it, it, it's more internal for me. It's more about the fact that business for good means that I, that I can do, I can walk and chew bubblegum. I can do two things at once. I can participate in a capitalist environment. Uh, I, can, I can have a for-profit business. I can do very well within the context of that business. But at the same time, if I'm, if I'm mindful of the way I structure that business, if I'm mindful of my customer and mindful of the people that are working with me and for me, and through me, I can also do good. I, I can provide other benefits outside of a profit motive that can enlarge and engender a great number of people outside of just perhaps my direct customers or my direct employees. And to me, business for good means that we need to be very considered about you know product, place, and people. Uh, what, what is our product? What are we making? What are we doing? Who's involved in that? Who, who are our beneficiaries, who are our customers, uh, who works with us, who works for us, who's our stakeholders, all that kind of thing. And then finally, you know, the place. We wanna make sure that we can, we can take care of the, the location in which any business that we have is, is located, whether it's a you know, brick and mortar business or even if it's something that's you know, online, uh, we have to be cognizant of the fact of the impact that we make to the environment, uh, is small E and big E environment. And once we have all those things, you know, sort of balled up, wrapped up together, working together, I think we find within that, that intersection of all those things right in the center, that is where business is for good is located, where we are cognizant of all those things that we're, we're, that work to make us profitable and work to make us also sustainable within, a, within the context of, of the work that we're doing. Uh, you know, it, I, I always, uh, you know, little vignettes out of movies always circulate in my mind, you know, I mean, because they're so, so graphic and they're so, so vibrantly alive with the point you might want to make. And I'm thinking of Gordon Gecko in Wall Street, you know, greed is good, you know, and from a, from a totally capitalistic point of view, uh, he has a point. I mean, he's quite real because again, it's that, that impetus, that motivation. To, to strive, to do more, to be on top, uh, to be uh, premier. Uh, that motivation really propels people in, and it propels them in a way that oftentimes for business is very good. Ambition is not a bad thing from a standpoint of, of a business uh, concept or a business context. Uh, but I think when we, we draw back from that and we, we pull back from that just a little bit, once again, we, we look at the fact that you know, we have to be cognizant of a few more things other than just looking at, at how, what, what did the, what would the till, you know, what did the till look like today? Um, and how do we invest in our businesses? Do we invest more of others in our business? Or do we invest more of ourselves in our business? Uh, one of the better parts of my career working with the University of Illinois as a community economic development specialist was the fact that I've probably talked more people out of starting businesses than I have helping them get into business. And what I mean by that is, is that people just have this wonderful idea about, man, you know, grandma's fried chicken recipe, best thing in the world, you know, so we're going to start a restaurant. Well, do you really know what it takes to start a restaurant? Do you, do you want to be married to something else? Because I mean, that's really what it takes to really make a restaurant good is that you just almost have to be married to it and you have to pour yourself into it. Some people aren't fit for that. So, you know, when I think about the context, you know, again, the context of business for good and how that applies into the real world aspect of things. Uh, I, I just I just go back to you know where do we find ourselves in the intersection of those things as you pointed out, and I th I think we we just need to be cognizant of the fact that it 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 takes more of us or it takes more of others to really make things work and work well within that realm. And I think part of the work that we are doing within this course 
that we're, we're putting together for the freshmen. And what we're doing is that we're giving them an incredible opportunity to experience what it's like to think about those things, about what it takes to keep a business sustainable from a, from a standpoint of uh, positive cash flows and uh, also being able to keep people sustainable from an environmental standpoint and sustainable from a societal standpoint, you know, doing benefit and doing good in the, in the country. And uh, I think one of the best things we can offer is a platform for failure uh, in, the, in the fact that, you, you know, you, you can come in here, you have this great idea, you know, your grandma's fried chicken, you know, well, whew, it's great. And then when you start, you know, start putting the numbers to it and start looking at it and you do a little testing and, you know, you, do, you get your design work put, put together about what it's going to be and where you, you finally come to the point like, it's not going to work. It won't work. And the good news is, is you've, all you've invested in some ways is your time. You've not had any capital invested at this point or what have you. But, but it teaches, I think, the lesson of uh, you, you, have to be, you have to be thorough in terms of evaluating everything that it takes to go into something. You may have a wonderful idea, but you can't implement it. Uh, you may have a great opportunity to implement something, but it's the wrong idea. Uh, you may have this wonderful idea that you can implement, but it's not the right time. So all, you know, it's the intersection of all those things that really has to come together, or you have to bend those things to your will <laughs> in terms to make an environment in which, in fact, you can be successful. And I think one of the best things that we do, quite frankly, is that we create a really challenging environment. Uh, for students to really, you know, vet themselves, and, you know, to think externally about all the intersections that need to take place. It's not just a standard business model. It just isn't uh, because, you know, there's ruts in the road and the, and the tree fell and we, we got to get, you know, we can't get across today. So how are we going to get our product? We got to conjure all those things. I, and as, as I've told, and I know you have as well, what I tell students, you know, that are in my sections is that, you know, if you can figure out how to do it here, in these constraints, under these conditions, in this environment that we're giving you, you'll have the capacity to be able to, to put a business model together that will work almost in any consideration that you would choose because you've learned the skill of knowing what questions to ask, where to look, and looking bottom up to be able to implement that business plan as you go forward. So I, I think that's the, the, the biggest, biggest challenge is believing that <clears throat> and learning the craft of starting bottom up uh, and uh, then implementing as you go and understanding what it will take to actually put your, your vision into place and make it work.